the Australian exposure to the US directly is fairly small. If there were a tariff put on Aussie products going to America, some people would feel that, but not very many. And with, let's say, a 10% tariff, it wouldn't really be a game changer, you know, a mild irritant. Of course, if America starts to aggressively decouple from China, that would have flow through implications. But that has been a risk that has been stressed over and over again by, you know, deeper thinkers for years and years and years and if at this stage australia still hasn't done any prepar preparatory work for that that's really more on australia um, i'm not saying it will happen but it's been blindingly obvious that it could happen for a very very long time and in fact just today if i may um, we had the rba testifying the governor uh, in parliament and I, if i understand correctly she said they haven't done any modeling for what a trade war with china could mean for the Australian economy, which I'm pretty staggered about because they have a large team who are supposed to look at these things. We all knew there was a US election. We all knew it was 50-50. And actually some of us knew it was more likely Trump was going to win. And we all know what he says he's going to do once he gets into office in January. So you put that together and you wonder politically, how is it possible that the RBA decided they don't need to look at that or to try and think what it means? Mm. I mean, an OECD study has shown that Australia could suffer a 1.2% reduction in GDP as a result of a 10% reduction in global trade between major, major countries. So to your point, there's a big risk here for Australia. Well, potentially, if you're looking at Australia as a net exporter, yes, there is, there is a risk there. But of course, part of what this Trumpian paradigm, um, if, if we may, is talking about is shifting the structure of what we understand about how the economy works and how global trade works. So where Australia is most vulnerable is directly to something happening with China. That obviously would have a flow through effect. Um, but you know, for many years now, as I was already saying, there's been an impetus to try and redirect Australian trade towards a wider variety of trade partners. And that's only looking at the trade aspect you know, one of the other things that Trump's talking about, uh, whether he can deliver it or not, is very, very different, is looking more internally again, to be making more things in America, to be onshoring again. Why isn't Australia saying make Australia great again? And I don't mean in the cultural sense. I'm not trying to say that you should have to copy Trump. But why is there no concrete steps being taken to say, well, if they can put on a tariff and reindustrialize and therefore immunize themselves from having to rely on exporting to others, why isn't Australia starting to think where it can, because it doesn't apply everywhere, about doing some similar things? And I believe the government has been saying that, but maybe it needs to be doing much more on that. That's just a polite suggestion. Mm. Of course, there was the Made in Australia campaign, but uh, we'll move along. When it comes to how you see the global world order with Trump in the White House, how does it look to you in the next couple of years compared to what it looked like in 2017? Well, I think what you have to remember is in 2017, Trump really wasn't prepared to be president. I mean, some backstage reporting suggests he didn't expect to win. You can see when he got into office, he didn't know how anything worked. He was relying on a, a bunch of old cronies that he'd known that he trusted who also didn't know how things worked. And mar large parts of his own party were vociferously opposed to what he wanted to achieve. So even though he did certainly get some things done, overall, there wasn't much rhyme or reason to a lot of it. If we look today, you can see it's a very different picture. The Republican Party is very much in his image. He now has a deep talent pool of MAGA types around him who not understand how the levers of policy need to be pulled to get things done. And as in 2016, it does look like he's going to carry the Senate and the House. And of course, he has a very conservative Supreme Court behind him, which may also be uh, you know, more generously minded towards some of the things that he would like to do. So he's in a far stronger position today to make genuinely transformative change. Now, we can hope that's for the better, but it's certainly going to be change. So. If we're expecting everything to stay the same, the same rules, the same kind of economic policies, you know, a continuation of everything we've seen, that's likely to, to not be the case. On the financial market front, we saw bond yields push sharply higher ahead of this victory and on the victory. Is that a confirmation that we're going to have a substantially higher inflationary period ahead globally? 
the market is certainly starting to look at it that way. Now, to be fair, even before Trump had won, and even during a period when the market was ostensibly not pricing in Trump trades so much, going back a few weeks, since the Federal Reserve, the American Central Bank, cut interest rates by 50 basis points, which is normally only seen during a crisis rather than a good economy, we had, ironically, already started to see the long end of the bond market sell off and those long bond yields start to move higher. That was already a worrying signal saying the last thing this economy needs is more rate cuts and more juice. So now you add Trump on top of that, who likes rate cuts, who likes juice, and who's going to have tax cuts, uh, tariffs, which could easily be inflationary. And you start to see a picture where, yes, potentially there is more US inflation out there. Now, the big question is, to circle back to something I said a while ago, we're not sure if it means American inflation and therefore global inflation, or whether it means American inflation, but the rest of the world has deflation, i.e. America booms, everyone else dooms. And we're not sure which way that will go yet. We have to watch each bond market in each country and the politics in each country to see whether they can ride that wave or get swept away by it. And of course, the FOMC is meeting and will hand down its ranked decision very early hours uh, in the morning Australian time tomorrow. Is the Trump victory going to change the idea that we'll see another couple of rate cuts in the US, including one tomorrow morning? Well, that's a really interesting question. Were we to not see a rate cut, that would really, uh, you know, really, really topple a lot of expectations and cause a lot of consternation. We believe we will. We believe it will be a smaller rate cut, just a 25 basis points. Um, and we won't get a great deal of detail from the Fed this time. It would be December when we get you know, more meat on the bones of what they're thinking. But I want to be very clear, pre-election, we were already saying we thought Trump would win just because of what the polls were showing. And we were also saying if he puts in place tariffs, which we assume he will, it would mean interest rates could not go down as far in America as the market was pricing. We were already saying they would be stuck at 4.25 as the floor. And we're expecting them to go down to 4.75 fairly soon, uh, as, as in the, at the next meeting. So not much more left in the tank after that. And then we would have to adapt to that being the base from which we proceed. Now, that has real implications for Australia as well, of course. And those implications are higher rates for longer in Australia, do you think? Well, potentially, because if you go the opposite route and you say Australia can cut rates even if America isn't, then the Australian dollar is going to have a word with you and it's going to get a lot weaker. Now, whether that is or isn't inflationary depends on the global backdrop. But the important message here is no one understands exactly what's going to happen. I don't, no one, no one does. Trump certainly doesn't. But once you start making the kind of systemic changes that he says he's going to, you get an awful lot of volatility. Afterwards, things could settle for the better or the worse, but certainly there will be a lot of volatility going forward. Michael Every, thank you so much. Thank you.